Sandeep Sabarwal joining in. We've also got Dwani Patel on the technicals. Good to have you both on board. Sandeep, I'm going to get in your take. I don't know if you heard out my colleague Sharad talking about new age tech stocks being the flavor of the season, but he had a point to make. The fact that we've already seen quite a heady run up in a lot of these names, does that mean that for the rest of the year, there's a limited upside potential only? I don't think so, because from a time when these companies were not uh, delivering as per expectations, so the stocks were not doing well. So now where the companies have some of the companies have turned around, done better than expectation. So the stock prices have run much ahead of fundamentals. So in many of these companies, the valuations are running at levels where they might be 100 times three-year forward earnings again now. So, so I think that, that, that's the risk because the whole point is that it assumes that everything will continue the same, they'll continue to accelerate growth, etc. But... Uh, that might not really happen. So I think it has to be, first of all, it has to be case by case. And secondly, uh, across the board, the run-up has been very substantial. Dhani, uh, what are your trading ideas for the day? So uh, on the trading side, I'm keeping an eye over here on HCL Tech uh, in the first instance, uh, as we've already seen that in uh, last session, the IT pack was holding up uh, well in the trade and uh, HCL Tech is one of the counters where I'm expecting an upswing to continue over here. Uh, the target of 1660 to 16.75 uh, is what I'm expecting on the higher side with the stop loss on the lower side at 15.98. And uh, FSL is also one of the counters that is on the radar right now, uh, given that the stock is already making a higher, high, higher, uh, low formation. It's already tested its... Uh, uh, you know, shorter moving averages on the daily chart and on intraday charts as well. We are seeing that the uh, volume is picking up in this particular counter. Current levels, uh, buy is recommended on this one. Stop loss on the lower side of 282. There is a target of 320 is expected on the higher side here. Uh, Sandeep, uh, I want to talk to you about uh, m, &M. You tracked it from quite lower levels and tracked the journey. Uh, it went to almost 3,000, came back. And look at how, you know, extremely attractive... At least I found the rocks, the new Thar, the rocks, uh, Roxy or whatever it's called, very attractive. And the price point and the top end is at 20. And they've also kind of promised five to six more models, refreshing models over the next one year. Uh, all of that is priced in, in your view, or could it keep the stock also pretty warm, even from these levels? I think uh, m, m is one of the most underappreciated uh, auto stocks because if you actually look at the number of uh, uh, launches of products and the number of products which become successful, uh, m, m is actually one of the leaders in that space. And uh, its valuations, although it's run up substantially, are still not, I would say, excessive. So my guess is that given the recent... Uh, recent slowdown in auto sales which is happening as an inventory correction which is playing out it's possible that some of the auto stocks could remain subdued or consolidated for some more time but an additional trigger for m, &M also could be the revival in the farm equipment sales which has been subdued for some time and uh, monsoons across the board seem to be normal and that could boost uh, uh, sales of tractors also going forward so all in all i would say it's well placed uh, Maybe there could be some more phase of consolidation, but longer term, it still looks good. Let's get a move on then. And Sandeep, curious as to how you're looking at um, some of the OMCs, given the kind of moves that we've been seeing in crude oil prices, what's the view on some of these crude-related stocks? The OMC results last part of our below expectations, and given the movement in crude oil prices and the overall pricing environment, obviously these companies are, will be unable to increase prices given the fact that we have assembly elections coming up now. So it's highly unlikely there will be any price increase. So uh, there's nothing much going for them. So I think uh, there are no triggers for the upside, I would say. Suresh, I'd like to draw everyone's attention to this long list of stocks which are in FNO ban. Um, I think 20 stocks are approximately are in FNO ban and some of these names are... Uh, very unique in a sense, uh, you know, when it's standing out. AB Capital, ABFRL, Biocon, uh, LIC Housing Finance, PEL, Sale, Sun TV. What does that indicate about the market? Nourish? Nourish? 
Dunesh is my voice reaching you? Uh, now I'm able to hear you. Yeah. Would you like me to ask the question again or you did uh, not yes, hear Yes, I missed the question. So, Nuresh, why is there a long list of stocks which are there in FNO ban? So, there are two reasons for it. One is uh, the obvious reason which people say there is speculation. Second is the larger size of arbitrage funds. So, today we have more than a one and a half lakh crore arbitrage fund, which is basically they go long in cash and short in futures. So, that takes up a lot of part, which is not generally moving all through the, uh, say, once you lock in a yield, uh, those positions don't change for the whole expiry. So many a times uh, we've seen 20 to 40 percent, 50 percent of the futures OI is where the arbitrage funds is, uh, fund is short. So a lot of this uh, uh, OI does not really move. And that's one of the major reasons uh, where I would say whenever there is a good yield, uh, trade gets locked and it does not move. And suddenly the stock goes into abandon any further speculation. So there are two reasons for it. One. Uh, there is, uh, wherever there are large moves, we see stocks going into band. And second is a large arbitrage uh, fund book. And overall, uh, NAC itself has a very tight regulation in terms of the open interest. We are uh, very tightly bound. Uh, I think going forward, that should change in terms of uh, the amount of open interest is allowed. Sandeep, uh, you saw this, uh, the entire issue happened with uh, RT, RT Industries. 15% lower on good volumes. Uh, you know, at, at one point in time, just a while back when the new CEO came in, people were pretty excited about a former McKinsey coming in, etc. But the way, uh, you know, the messaging in the conference call went out, the uncertainty on, on the margin front, it brought down the entire chemical pack lower sharply. Uh, what are your thoughts there? Specifically on RTI, I won't be able to comment because I, I'm not tracking that company. But the entire argument on the chemical side where people are making that there is going to be a revival and prices will move up and these companies will regain their margins, that's fallacious. So China demand is very weak. China supply is very strong. So across the board on the chemical ecosystem, what we are seeing is that the pricing pressure is very high. So that's positive for companies who are consuming these. But for the chemical producers who have also expanded capacity rapidly, due to high margins which they saw post-COVID, for them it's a double whammy. That one, prices are down, they have new capacities and incremental sales which they'll make. It will also lead to interest costs going up, capitalization in the P&L, and there being no profitability. So I think uh, we are still seeing tough times for chemical companies in general. There could be exceptions here and there, but in general, I think it's, uh, it's still a tough time. Some stocks where volumes were really strong on... Uh... Wednesday, PB Fintech, big surge in volume. Vigard, Sandeep tracks this one. I'm coming right to you, Sandeep, on Vigard. Volumes on uh, Wednesday again were extraordinary high. ICICI Securities, very strong volumes. SJVN, again, very, very strong volumes. These are stocks where volumes have been very, very strong. Not the price, guys. Let's show the volume. Researchers send that data. Sandeep, Vigard. We've discussed this one with you before. Is the deck now getting ready? Is the stock now getting ready for a launch? It already launched. <laughs> the stock is already up 70% since the beginning of the year when we were actually when we actually got into the stock. Now the company delivered very strong results. The outlook also is good, but it's for me it's tough to buy at these prices. So I would think that. Uh, it's gone up so much, it needs to consolidate somewhat because uh, we, we, after such a sharp up move, the valuations have also become high. Unless and until the festival demand again is something which totally surprises us on the upside. Coab now is become one of the top 100 companies in market cap in India. I mean, just imagine. Do you remember when was that whole issue of ED rate? I think it was that. Four months back, 3800 was the low. And then but from there, where is, uh, where is Polycab? Let's look at it. Actually. And the best part was, Nikhil, if you remember, the management just did not yeah, react nothing. on it. They just did not. So what they did was about 10 days later, the results were coming out. And then, and that was, a, that, that's a low, 3,800 there about. Yeah, there. so the news came when the stock was at 4,500 or maybe it's 5,000. Fell 5, to 3,800. Fell yeah. to 3,800 and from 3,800, just see the kind of uh, resurrection that stock has actually seen. This entire space 
and the odd one out sandeep here is havels and i think uh, dhwani spoke about havels is havels now getting ready sandeep because it belongs to the same family the same family tree the polycap derives most of its uh, sort of profits from cables and wires whereas havels is a much more diversified company now havels is also done well it's not that it's not done well it's it's a it's a more widely held company with more liquidity etc so i think swings in that will be obviously lesser but the stock has done well it's not that it's not done well so across the board i would think that uh, valuations for consumer durable companies have moved up but for them to sustain or move higher so, so i still think that next two years will again see a revival cycle because last three years were bad but then it might be a slower move unless and until again the caveat is that how the festival season sales move is something which we don't know okay fair enough that's the view coming in meantime what's the stance when it comes to real estate as a whole a lot of analysts and they seem to be alluding to the fact that we are going to see um you know a pretty strong trajectory within this entire space you've already seen quite a run up that's the one year chart of the real estate index um uh, that's gained about 30% or so do you believe that there's still more legs for growth and what would be some of the key um triggers within the individual stocks i think pre sales data and the result delivery for most of the real estate companies has been good <clears throat> the only risk now which remains in real estate is that with rbi keeping liquidity tight and with the new liquidity norms etc we speak in next year the overall credit growth in the system comes down and real estate as a uh, it runs only on uh, basically borrowed money and uh, housing loans etc so if the overall credit flow slows down what it does to the real estate sector is uh, something we need to monitor so i would think that uh, most of these companies are uh, today priced to perfection not assuming any slow down but uh, given the way the liquidity picture is panning out there could be some slow down going forward hmm nirish the other one which is worth uh, revisiting i think is peramal enterprises it's popping right up there in terms of a stock where under performance is now getting more and more severe and sandeep i mean you know since your compliments i thought piramal couple of years ago was on a verge of you know turn around you were always of the view that look you think there was much more than what markets were excited about i was of the camp who thought that the business had turned but uh, unfortunately the business has not turned so i'm coming to you on pl sandeep but nuresh pel first so uh, this the disappointment continues so it's uh, been there for the last 2 two, two and a half years every time it makes a comeback we see gap down so the worst part is it's not just that the comeback comes in and then it goes sideways so uh, the last time uh, it went up from say 700 odd levels last year towards 1100 and then we again fell to 750 and in that period also any bounce back we see it has seen a drop from 950 to 850 multiple times and now we were at 1050 just a couple of weeks back and now we are at sub 900 so the disappointment keeps getting worse so unless and until it starts sustaining about 1050 1100 not the stock to look out for so uh, we have no clue when it starts uh, turning around and on the flip side actually the other stock from the same group uh, piramal pharma for three quarters in a row has been showing improved performance and almost back to if you remember sandeep 200 rupees is exactly where it has got demerged from the main company fell to 60 and then has been coming back to almost 182 185 have you looked at piramal pharma sandeep not specifically but uh, then this is something which you've seen in the pharma sector overall if you actually monitor pharma sector results this year and uh, they have also benefited from uh, low chemical and input prices so across the board we've seen margin improvement in pharma company and result delivery much above expectations So, so I guess it's a industry phenomena, and those tailwinds would remain for some more time. Dhani, anything interesting in the pharma space? 
Uh, farmer space definitely there are certain names which uh, have been uh, trading well but we've also seen that in the last few sessions there is a correction that we are uh, seeing over here so uh, as of now uh, there is nothing good to buy on at this levels there is a certain dip I'm still expecting over here in the overall uh, pharma pack as a whole so uh, it's wait and watch on the pharma right now from technical side. I want to go to brokerages right now ICICI Securities, Angel, Mutila Loswal. <clears throat> Sandeep, where are some of these so-called brokerage and financial intermediaries headed now? The bull market is intact, SIP is intact, MNAs are happening, block deals are happening, IPOs are happening. Good time to revisit an ISEC or a Mutila Loswal. Mutla Rosal is much more diversified, so I think it's uh, no longer a, like it's not a brokerage per se, it's a, a whole uh, sort of wealth management company. And then there are standalone brokerages like you're showing Angel Brokerage. So, where there are standalone brokerages, I think the margin pressure could be severe going forward. And with uh, the norms on FNO, et cetera, also coming up, we could see trading volumes come down. But uh, for companies who are a combination of wealth management, asset management, and investment banking plus uh, broking, etc., for them that uh, time should continue to be good. In fact, uh, Glenmark Pharma Concall is on right now, and if you look at the way margin expansion story or even debt reduction story at Glenmark has happened, pretty interesting. From from six hundred odd. In the last one, one and a half year, Glenmark Pharma has risen to almost 1500. Nuresh, what do the charts look like uh, at Glenmark Pharma? In fact, the management would be joining us at 10.30 a.m. VS Money of Glenmark Pharma. But uh, a chart check on that one. So, it's been an uh, amazing move in terms of slow and steady, just continues to do well. So, the stock, uh, say, from the last year at 400, where it bottomed out, it has continued in a higher top, higher bottom formation. And Generally, when such large moves happen, we see a lot of days where there are upticks, uh, say 3, 4, 5%. But this has been a slow and steady uptrend. Even if you look at the last two months, it's gone from 1200 to 1500. But you don't see a single day where it has gone up 4, 5% up. So the structure is positive. And the stock has also finally managed to cross those 2015 highs of 1300. So in this case, uh, it's just that uh, the stop losses get a little more deeper given the rally. So uh, even at current levels, if somebody is ready to take a stop below 1420, it still looks a positive chart. It's very interesting that what is happening in, uh, you know, what's happening in some of the pharma names here. Not everything is lo looking strong. You know, Kotak came out with a report, I think, on Wednesday that the underlying valuations of DVs are extraordinary high. Kotak's have been calling the market top for all almost 18 months now, maybe more than that. I mean, sir, <clears throat> with all due respect, and it's an opinion, you have right to go right or wrong, that only market decides. I mean, we try to figure out uh, markets based on past data, but markets are like, are, are like life. You live forward, you understand backwards. So that's what this market is all about. I mean, it continues to surprise you. Who would have thought after election, the markets would be here? On the election day, we saw a big crack than the recovery. Everyone thought that if small, small, if a capital gain taxes are changed, it could be a repeat of 2018 when markets will peak out for many years now. That has not happened. When markets were selling off in the first week of October, Nikkei was down 14-15%. I mean, experts had called off a US market uh, recession, but that has not happened. So markets are surprising you. And that's where I think uh, this whole debate of valuation versus near-term return, you never know. You know how much more markets can go. I mean, you never know. Do you make future investments? The answer to that is also no. But just to, do you just sell out and you know stay on the cash? Maybe the answer to that is no. And Sandeep, this is where this good old debate continues, right? You know that if you're buying right now, you will get very nominal future returns. But if you sell right now, you're also missing out on the exciting phase. The market strength is telling you some story. And so I think it tends to be stock by stock. So you identify stocks which you think have run their course, like we exited railway stocks, Tata Motors, and cut down one or two other holdings and are holding some cash on the sidelines while being invested with rest of the capital around be 80, 85% invested, keep the rest in cash, and then wait for opportunities. Markets will give opportunities. All stocks don't move in the same cycle. 
so some sectors will underperform at some time it will give you an opportunity to buy into them etc so i think that has to be the strategy now like you rightly said markets have run up a lot and uh, if you see current quarter results the overall earning growth is just around 4 odd percent so so i think it's not going to be i it doesn't look like at least that we are going to have a straight line up move from here on so we need to time enter into our opportunities and hold on to them after that so if, you, if you get the right entry price then you can just hold on for the long term okay just uh, checking in on some of the uh, other stocks that will be in the spotlight in trade today you've got a gmr pharma as we highlighted it's been a pretty steady set of numbers so we'll be watching out for that stock with the profit scaling quite significantly margins as well have expanded to about 18% Max India that came out with a weak set of numbers the losses have ballooned now to 27 crores versus 12 crores what they delivered last year so that is also something that we'll be taking cognizance of and uh within the metal space uh, Vedanta has approved the sale of 14 crore equity shares of Hindustan Zinc which is about 3.3% of the issue by way of an OFS so we'll be checking in on that stock Sandeep speaking of um, the entire metals basket what's your view on Vedanta in particular given the kind of corporate actions that we've seen off late and where does your preference lie within metals there's no preference actually in metals because i think uh, the metal basket overall is facing some stress especially the steel sector all of us have been reading at least the way steel prices have cracked and china imports are impacting steel prices globally i think it's going to be a tough time most of the other metals have also corrected almost 20% from the peaks they saw uh, a few months back so so i think it's going to be a tough phase for metals overall and vedanta has been raising a lot of cash like there was a qip now they are selling so i don't know how much money they want to raise and where this sort of time money is going but the uh, overall metal pricing uh, cycle doesn't indicate that uh, we'll see more upswing in the overall metal basket so sandeep what is there on your radar when you say you're sitting on cash i'm assuming that you are looking at some ideas and that idea could be just a judgment call in terms of valuation or the market level what is that you would add more or you would buy fresh so i think uh, on the uh, overall uh, basket of uh, sectors keep a look out on some of the renewable energy companies if we see then correct decently like we've seen psus correct and if that gives an opportunity look at that some auto auto ancillaries or even the financials because financials have been underperforming they could underperform for some more time so so i think it's a view which we where we need to watch for some more time i think it could take some time before we start getting opportunities uh have you seen the new thar launch yeah i saw it yeah and see like i was uh, mentioning to ajay mnm is a totally under appreciated company in terms of the number of products they launch and which become successful if you look at other auto companies they trade at much higher valuations than mnm while mnm actually does much better so i think that mnm will do very well long term it's had a sharp run up maybe it will consolidate for some more time because uh, uh, retail uh, sales of auto are subdued for some time uh, inventory correction is happening and for the festival season again should be good so i don't see any concerns on mnm as a stock long term all right sandeep thanks so much for joining in and sharing with us your thoughts let's queues are looking strong they are likely to have a impact on the broader market as well that's what what is beaten down in the last uh, you know a week or so a silent kind of corrective phase is going on in mid cap but are there any opportunities there now dhwani nuresh your mid cap bets dhwani starting with you uh currently on the mid cap side i definitely see that there is some sector uh, you know churning that's going on over here but uh, most of the stocks are testing their uh, support levels i'll wait for the opening uh, today to uh, comment further on any buying bets on the mid cap opportunities 
What about you? Your mid cap ideas? <laughs> so taking a contra bet on Bandhan Bank, a lot of small cap banking names have corrected. So Bandhan Bank uh, actually saw a big uptick uh, post numbers. Uh, the stock was actually up 10-15% on that day. And now we are back to the day prices where it was before the results. 180-85 has been a strong support for the stock. Uh, uh, this was the low back in 2020 as well as in 2023 and in 2024. So a good risk reward here initially would expect a bounce towards 210 and then if it crosses 220 a longer term trend change. So at current levels the risk reward is good to keep a stop loss below 185 and a target price of 210 in the short term. Right there you have it top mid cap recommendations. Let's if you like this video then like share and subscribe to ET now.